So now that we have the... Oh, I'm going to horribly mispronounce it. It's not... Akasai, maybe? So, sorry if I'm horribly mispronouncing that. Well, you got a key based around a particular type of plant, which obviously makes a lot of sense since we were already in a garden. But, you know, we have a few locked doors, so let's see if we can't get one of those unlocked. Ernest? Are you there? No. I guess not. Yeah, Ernest is still not very talkative in the least. But we now enter a new portion of the house, a nice little well, it would be a sunny area if the sun did exist in Silent Hill. few interesting paintings and aesthetics going on in the general area. Uh, overall, I'd say uh, I do like this entire, you know, mansion setup. It's just, well, in the end it ends up being just, you know, ancillary, and you don't ever really have to see it, so. But we have a tiny child's room here. I don't want to say it's a particular gender. I suppose it could be a little girl's, but it seems to be a fairly young child's kind of an asexual, you know, look about it. We did get some matches, though. I don't think, uh, yeah, there's not too many matches left, but, you know, two or three are still something we can use. I will say though that the sub scenario actually starts to use a few jump scares, or maybe I'm just not used to the sudden changes in you know noise. But yeah, the the little pieces of dialogue that we kind of get up in the attic are a bit. I, I get they're just jump scares to me. I don't know. But by lighting that candle, we're able to see this item located underneath the chair here. Which, after investigating it, it appears to be a birthday card to uh, someone's father. And we get another mention of a member of the Baldwin family. So, but there's not much else up here in the attic, so I guess we should go ahead and get going. Give it. To my daddy. Well, since we don't really know of anyone else in the particular mansion, I suppose that leaves only Ernest to go talk to this uh, card about. And it does spawn a few more enemies, at least kind of signifying that you're on the right track. Uh, sadly though, sometimes the camera placement is a bit of a dick, to say the least, whenever you're going through this uh, mansion. Especially with all the tight corners and things like that. Especially when it's a lying figure and all you're getting is the random noise effect. It becomes kind of an annoyance. 
Also, I'm wondering where she's actually hearing the noise from, because for James it would have been from the radio, but for her it's just kind of coming out of nowhere. But it doesn't look like Ernest is in here anymore, so I wonder where he went to. Outside of the few items in the room, there is a book that you might miss checking out. It covers a bit more about the... I'm not going to say it again. It's the name of the plant that was on the key. And apparently it's inherent symbolism in a number of different cultures. You can pause this at your own leisure. I tried to go slow enough to where you could read it if you wanted to. But for the most part, the plant usually symbolizes life and, you know, goodness and all that jazz. And it's kind of assumed that it's also the plant that makes the white liquid necessary for the resurrection ceremony. But in the end, we still need to find Ernest, so I guess it's time to continue exploring the house. Also, the house seems to have a major infestation problem, as we'll be seeing. Not really in this wonderful camera angle, but we'll be seeing more creepers later on. I think there's actually more creepers in this mansion than there are in the overall game. And also, I'm really thankful that they, they give you plenty of revolver ammunition, because I really couldn't picture using the meat cle or the Chinese cleaver all that much. But just wanted to double check and make sure I, I wasn't going to an incorrect floor. Also, you know, scary noises. Being on a higher plane than the lying figure has made it pretty much impossible for me to stop him before he starts wiggling away, so I'm not even going to worry about that. Yet again, the looming corridors, the grayness, the the feeling of just being confined really permeates throughout the entire house. While normally a, a mansion would show some measure of luxury, this mansion instead just shows a large measure of disuse and being not lived in and just seems more of a crypt or a tomb rather than a luxurious house. And yet again, the camera totally fucks with me. There, there's really no way outside of you just assuming there's already an enemy there to know there's an enemy. But see you next time for the rest of the mansion.